As we all know, those people from Zaka, they're actually angels. Angels. I was just living now the Minyan. Somebody approached me and he tells me, he tells me, I live in Israel. And I want to tell you a lot of people they don't know. After Hamas entered, there was a second wave or a third wave as well. People think that there are innocents in Gaza, there is no innocence. Second and third wave there were there were teens, ladies, elders coming inside Israel and some of them they did even worse than what the guys from Hamas did. And those angels that are right next to me right now, they were putting the life in danger because the Hamas terrorists, they continue being in the area in Israel for a couple of good days. And they were coming every single day, non-stop, to try to take out bad bodies, to try to clean up all the mess and all the disaster that happened. So I would like and I would love to uh, present to you uh, Mr. Tzvi Greinemann, Simcha, Simcha de Greinemann, Mechila, from the Zaka organization, to tell you a little bit about the stories that happened during the 7th of October. Uh, you will be amazed, and I think we will get a lot of hizuk from this. Come on. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, one second. One, one, one. Okay, good. Okay. 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 I called up two of my volunteers in a drug and they joined me, went into the car, I couldn't even help for my kids and my wife and the Never in my life I thought that I would be loading up truckloads of bodies with the nightmares. <laughs> Thank you. 
after the disaster, we are still dealing from house by house, looking and cleaning up the blood. Waarom is het zo simpel? Het toch is niet zo. Maar het komt ook in de verhalen. Alleen dan komen we dus in de verhalen. Ah ja. 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 Ah אני מגיע לשם, אני רואה מתנדב מגיע אליי, הוא אומר לי, תיקח, אני אשתי ככה בידיים, תינוק, אולי בגיל של הבת שלו, שנתיים, תינוק. אני מגיש את היד, ניסים לקבל, ואני לא, ואני לא מוכן לזה, לא נפשי, לא פיזי, צריכים לראות לי ככה ידיים, בלי שתינוק, אני אומר לו, מה אתה מבין? הוא אומר לי, אני גם לא יכול להגיד את זה, והתינוק היה רותח. אני זוכר שהוא פותח סמיית שקים ואני מכניס את הידיים עם התינוק שלי מלא תוך השקים הוא סוגר את זה וככה אנחנו הולכים לאמבולנס ושם הוא מוכן And every man that he walked out of the room, you can see the cake standing there so happy that they had more. What we saw over there, on the wall, on the wall, was written with blood. Was written with blood to my eyes, my elves. That's it. Because they couldn't run away because they would kill the rest. אנחנו כנראה בזעקה, קיבלנו החלטה, שלא נעצור ולא נעזוב פה את המקום עד שלא נביא את כל הקדושים בקרב ישראל. אנחנו לא נשקוט. כל טיפת דם שיהודי שנרצח פה יגיע לקרב ישראל. מדי חודש וחודשיים וכמה שנצטרף. מתנדבים לא יוותרו ויבואו לפה יום אחרי יום, יעברו קיבוץ קיבוץ, יישוב יישוב, בית בית, רכב רכב, כל איפה שהיה יהודי שנרצח, אנחנו נביא כל הדברים בקבר ישראל. Wow. 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 And it's unbelievable that the men that are with us, the man that is right next to me, he was part of this. He was there. He was taking care of the bodies as well. We don't understand what these people, simply angels, they gave their life and they put such an effort to see all these disaster just to bring them to a Kebel Israel. So with your permission, a couple of minutes, we'd like to hear some words from uh, Mr. Simcha. Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. My name is Simcha Greeneman. I'm 47 years old. I'm a Zaka volunteer for 32 years already. Baruch Hashem. I'm part of Zaka International. I go around the world to bring people to Kever Israel to make sure that everyone that was Niftar has this chut of Kvura. Go around the world not only to Jewish countries, but Islam countries, Christian countries, because the understanding of humanity and the chesed that we do to other people should be mashpia on Am Yisrael, to be able to continue living in Eretz Yisrael without, without fear. 
and what happened in Eretz Israel, in our home, our land, is something that we cannot understand what really happened. Simchat Torah, the highest level of understanding what it means, continuation of life, celebrating, finishing the Torah, starting the Torah again and again, that's the moment that the atrocity happened. In the moment of me simcha le'evil in minutes that Am Israel was hit in a way that we cannot understand. Hundreds of bodies, hundreds of bodies. People, men, women, children, adults, people that survived the Holocaust were butchered in ways that we could not understand. 22 weeks already from that atrocity. 17 weeks I was on the scene. 17 weeks. Two and a half weeks collecting bodies and parts. And then another 14 and a half weeks cleaning every house, every car, every drop of blood, making sure that it comes to burial, because every drop of blood of these tzaddikim is like a Sefer Torah that was burned. And the ashes of the Sefer Torah, we have to take them, collect every drop of it, put it in a special box, and make a big divaya. And there's a lot of arachot, of tzomot if a Sefer Torah falls on the floor. If a Sefer Torah gets burned, the zinyan of sitting shiva and being mechazik the tzibur and the kal Israel. And over here, these people that were killed because they were Jews, the Zohar says that each one becomes a diamond in Kisei HaKavod. We as Zaka members when we deal with situations of niftarim, of chevra kadisha, so we put achlichim, the garments, they're white, special white garments that we dressed the niftarim. And we clean them up as they're walking down the aisle of the day that they're getting married. That's the inyan of putting on the garments, making sure that they look special because the day of the wedding is Yom Kippur. And they're coming in front of Akadosh Baruch Hu for din, so they should be pure and white. It says that people that were killed bizchut, that they were Jews, you do not take the clothes with the blood off their bodies. You bury them with the clothes, with the blood. You do not clean them. It's a big question, why? What's the purpose of that? So it says that the day that Mashiach will come, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will wear this special garment that the Malachim will sew up from those clothes, from the bodies of the, the, the Niftarim, the people that were killed. And it says, with that garment, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will go around it will be nokem nikma dama v'decha shafuch. Those people that were killed because they were special, they were Jews. The zchut of being a Jew, the zchut of being harugei malchut, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Ishmael Kohen Gadol, that's the level that these people get to, to become the highest of highest of spiritual. And we had the zchut to go through these houses, to collect these niftarim, to deal with the bodies, to deal with the parts of the bodies, what they went through. After weeks of working on the scenes, I was asked to come to speak in the UN, to try to explain to them what women went through, what the people around the world start screaming about what happens in Africa and different countries around the world, they make a big fuss of it. But when it happened in Eretz Israel to the Jews, no one said a word. So I came specially.
because I was there on the scenes and I dealt with so many bodies, so many people, so many women, children, with my own hands, with my own eyes, I saw things that no one should see these things in their life. Things that well, we'll never forget. Things that will be on our hearts till our last days. Things that we we can't speak about them. I was in Europe. I spoke in Germany, in France, in England. I came specially to speak to them in the parliament to try to change their understanding what's going on in Eretz Yisrael. For sure, humanity, for sure, there's a lot of people suffering in Gaza, for sure, we know that. But they need to understand that the, as long as Hamas is controlling them and the people around them are being killed, and for sure, Am Yisrael was killed by them. But we need to understand, as the rabbi said, there's no one, as well, there's not so many people over there that they're innocent. innocent. They came and they did whatever the other ones didn't do. They did worse things. We need to understand, because we're Jews, Amam and Ifchar, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the schut of the Torah, of understanding, of humanity. HaKadosh Baruch Hu bara orama, istakel beoraita. HaKadosh Baruch Hu looked at the letters of the Torah and created the world. By creating the world, by looking in the letters of the Torah, by understanding what it means, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us different letters to understand these uh, understandings, these things. People after the Holocaust, Harava David Lau, the chief rabbi of Eretz Israel, he came to see the scenes with me. He was heartbroken. And one of the parents walked with us and he was weeping and crying. He was saying, why, why, lama, 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 lama. The moments of the Astara of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's moments that we cannot understand what it means, para aduma. We cannot understand. Moshe Rabbeinu went through the desert, through Mitzrayim and did not have the schut to come into Eretz Yisrael. We cannot understand the reasons why HaKadosh Baruch Hu does things. He turned around to him and he gave him a big hug and he said to him, you should know one thing. The letters that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us, the Otiyot HaMairot, you have to understand sometimes you're not reading the right way of the words. So he says to him, Rabbi, what do you mean? So he says to him, Lamed Mem Hey could be pronounced Lama, but it could be pronounced Lema. What's our purpose? Not questioning Akadosh Baruch Hu, but understanding what Akadosh Baruch Hu wants from us. We should be united. We should be together. We should be strong as Am Israel. This parasha is the parasha of building the Mishkan, and building the Kilim, building Am Yisrael's spirit. It says, Vinatnu. The possibility of giving. But if you read the letters, Vinatnu, you can read it from both sides. You can read it from right to left and from left to right. What does that mean? Why is that such a special understanding of that word, Vinatnu? Because when you give, you get. When you hug someone, you're hugging, someone's hugging you. Because there's two sides. By hugging each other, by supporting each other, by understanding that some people could be a carpenter. The next one could be... Not yet, no. <laughs> <laughs>
by understanding, by being supportive, one by each other, each one that supports each other, by being there on these scenes, is understanding that not everyone is capable to do what we did, but understanding that when we have the hug of Kal Yisrael, and we're able to continue doing what we're doing, that's a big inyan of the Havana, of being united and together. Thank you. See, no, we're going to continue with the next program. Okay, I'll tell you, we're going to continue uh, right, right now with uh, the next uh, program. Just before that, just want to uh, tell you a short, short uh, thought that I had right now. In a while, the first we now was watching the video, and we all had our heart broke. I was also looking at Simcha. And Simcha, I believe you saw this video many times. And even, I don't know which, uh, which number of times they saw this, uh, this video, it was still fine. Because the person who was there and he saw what he saw, can never forget. So we're hugging Zaka, we're hugging Simcha, we're hugging each one of these volunteers because they are our brothers and whatever happened, happened to us as well. And we wish, and we pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we should have only the Sirot of God. Amen. 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 Welcome to stay. Somebody's making bring me warm water, please. Okay, one at a time, boys. Don't fight. One at a time, please. Don't fight. We make a mishabera afterwards. Don't worry. Yes, one at a time. Hot water. Warm water. Thank you so much. From Mel, he prepared it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Is this your coffee? No, I'll Just, throw it out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Charlie Jamal. No, Mel, Mel, Mel. As my creation, yes, sir, Chama. No, I can produce it. It's a bit. Ok, ahí está ahora el tarcón, ¿lo vas a poder ver? No, yo no lo puedo hacer. ¿Pero se puede doblar la cámara? No lo puedo hacer al mismo tiempo, porque la tarjeta no lo está permitiendo. No logro comunicar la tarjeta, no lo puedo hacer todo. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. ¿Ya hay sonido? Sí, 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 ya se lo voy a acomodar. Dígame cuándo puedo empezar. Spanish or English? English, what's the question? ¿Quieres español? Spanish? After, after 10, we'll give you the Spanish version. Okay, Kahal Kadosh, uh, we're going to have a special breakfast coming out in honor of the Zaka volunteers that are with us. Just make space, gracias. Thank you so much. Yeah, but pause it. I need to talk. I need to talk. No, no, no. Okay, so I'm going to start talking. And Rezat Hashem will coordinate with the video as well. Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Shabbat Shalom and Bemorach to everybody. Today, Sunday, the ninth day of Adar 1 corresponding to the 18th day of February 2024. As we announced uh, during Shabbat, 
we are welcoming today the volunteers of uh, Zaka. For those who may not be aware of it, but unfortunately they have become very famous uh, throughout the years, but specifically after October 7. Zaka is basically one of the leading organizations uh, in Eres Israel or perhaps the leading organization in Eres Israel that deals with the most uh, painful moment uh, of life. When lo aleno velo alechem, there are terrorist attacks, there are casualties, explosion, accidents, and matters related to unfortunate uh, passing, and often through a very unfortunate and painful experience, they are the ones who really are in charge uh, at all levels of clearing the area, cleaning the area, picking up the remains, human parts, uh, picking up the blood also for many obvious alachic uh, reasons. Uh, Zaka uh, is not a new organization in Eres Israel. It has uh, many, many years of history, and I'm afraid of asking how many individuals they have helped in the ultimate statement known as Hesed Shel Emet, a true act uh, of kindness. Although we have many other wonderful institutions in Eres Israel that deal with Atzala, with uh, medical matters, helping matters, the what we have heard throughout the Shabbat, but this comes to the ultimate aspect of life, the transition uh, to uh, the next stage of our life. In Hebrew, Zaka is a Rashi Tevot that stands for Zihui Korbanot Ason, the identification of casualties. That is the literal meaning of the word Zaka. In English, they added search and rescue, but I believe that they do much more than searching and rescuing. They provide all levels of Hesed Shelemet, of true act of kindness, uh, when the situation requires, and whatever it comes afterwards. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask how they feel and how they, 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 they live life after they see what they see. I think that we all understand that there is a perhaps an emotional uh, level of pain and anguish, and probably they have debriefing, and probably they may even have PTSD, the way we call it uh, in English, a post-traumatic stress disorder, I believe. That's the Lashete vote that stands. But obviously, individuals that devote their life uh, to deal with this level of, uh, of unfortunate moments of life, I hope and pray that they do have a great siyata dishmaya, a great heavenly a level of help to be able to help to be able to recover and to be able to continue. And obviously, it's our hope and prayer that Rehazat Hashem never again situations that require their services are never again happening. But as I mentioned inside this Eid of Shabbat, we have heard of a situation in an area very close to Kiryat Malachi. I think it's called Masmiya, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we know the aftermath of what happened on Eid of Shabbat. And you know, there is a lot of things going on, many of things that we know, many of things that we don't know. But today, I believe that I will take a step back from the daily class. I'm going to honor uh, Simcha Greinemann, which is a veteran, Zaka, a volunteer, a commander in the city of Modi'in. I do know that there are more uh, volunteers from Zaka uh, visiting us today. So we say to all of them, be strong, be courageous. Because the Baruch Baruch Hu is with you whatever place you go. So we're going to take a break from the usual class that we have. And I'm going to give over the mic uh, to the Simcha here with us to hear about the Holy Word and be ready uh, for a mature level of a uh, class, something that we don't get to hear, but you know what? Through all the busy weekend that we have had with us, 
with Atzala, the next step, the survivor, uh, and now Zaka, I think that it gives us like a better perspective of what's really going on in Eres Israel and what we are able to do from here to help whichever way we can Israel. So I'm going to give over the mic. You can put the mic on your head. We can turn the camera. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. That is being broadcasted live via itora.com. We are, for the Autora audience, we are going to be broadcasting a video from a Zaka, I believe from October 7. Okay, from October 7. Okay, we're going to try to play with the system. We are like a, like a recording studio in front of us to try to get the best experience through the audience. So for the Aitora audience, I hope you are able to see it and to hear it. And obviously for the large crowd uh, visiting us, complete silence is required. And by Zat Hashem, uh, we get to see whatever happened that day. Maybe we shut the lights. Shh. Shh. No, we're not shutting the lights. Keep it on so we are able to see. And please, I ask again, complete silence. Let us see and understand what is happening in Eres Israel. You have questions, I don't have answers. They have answers. Have answers and questions will be given the opportunity after they finish their presentation. Thank you so much for your understanding and cooperation. Well, we're working before. Go ahead, doesn't matter. We'll do, we'll do it afterwards. Shalom Aleichem. Thank you for having us. My name is Simcha Greenemann. I'm 47 years old. It's up there. I don't know what happened with the Yelly, which was working before. We'll try it afterwards. As I said, I'm 47 years old, father of five, grandfather of three, on a daily basis, I'm a carpenter. I have my own business. I have a school to train people to become self-supporting, to become carpenters, so they have fun myself. I'm a medic. For 32 years, I'm a volunteer in Zaka International. Zaka International, that means we go around the world. Doesn't make difference if it's a Jewish state or Christian state or even a Islam state. We go and we help the understanding of chesed and humanity to anyone around the world as creation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what we do. And for sure, for sure, for Am Yisrael, for our brothers and sisters, a year ago, we were in Turkey, helping over there after they had the earthquake. We were in Surfside. I was in Haiti, after the tsunami, in Bombay, Egypt, different countries all around the world. Wherever we're asked to come to help, we come. We don't ask any reasons or what. On Simchat Torah, the happiest day of understanding what it means, the circle of life of a Jew, finishing the Torah and beginning right away. We do never stop. We all the time finish and start, finish and start, understanding the circle of life of the Jew, dancing with the Torah, bringing the children, the babies, everyone to be there, 
to be part of it, to understand what it means. And all of a sudden, my phone rings. I answer my phone as a medic. And on the other side is a major from the, from the army. I served 27 years as a special force going around the world, Yichidat Chilutz, search and rescue from the army, from the IDF, as also part of Zaka, making sure that we bring the people to burial, Yitzvah, the last moments of their life, the last moments that there are on the world, on the earth, on the world, before they go to Shemaim, those last seconds that we have the schut to bring them to be buried. I get the call and I'm asked to come to Sderot. Zaka has 4,000 volunteers. It, it's different divisions. I'm involved almost in all the divisions from so many years being involved. But as a small volunteer, I'm also in charge of the truck of Zaka. That truck is basically for when people sit Shiva. So I'm in charge to take the truck and bring tents, tables, chairs, Aron Kodesh, Sefer Torah, so the families could sit comfortable, whatever they need, I take care of them. That truck is not for collecting bodies. It's not refrigerator. But it's a truck. Three years ago, we had a tragedy, a, a, a very sad situation in Eretz Yisrael in Miron. And 45 people got killed over there. So I every year go with the truck. I bring different things over there. They should have a feeding. And I was called then to take 14 bodies in the truck to Tel Aviv, to Abu Kabir. That's the place that the morgue is bring their bodies. It took me three months to just understand what I really dealt with, bringing 14 bodies in the truck. But the Simchat Torah, I had 72 bodies in the truck. From the floor to the ceiling. Bodies and bodies and bodies and understanding of how many people got killed. It's something that you could not understand. And this is only a few hours of beginning of Mosei Shabbat. Collecting one highway that basically normally takes three, four minutes to drive. Took us five and a half hours to clean, to bring only the bodies. We're not talking about cleaning the scenes. Talking about only collecting the bodies. Making sure that everything is documented the right way. That it took 50 years to deny the Holocaust. It took 50 seconds to deny what happened. So we have everything documented. A lot of people say around the world, you don't have proof, you're making up stories. So first of all, I'm here. I'm the eyes, and I'm the person that dealt with hundreds of bodies, hundreds of bodies. I was the one that spoke in the UN about women's rights, that the whole world was denying anything that happens in the world, uh, in Africa or in different countries around the world, what happens with women, right away the whole world jumps out. Oh, what's going on? What? And it happened in Israel. Nothing. Silence. For weeks and weeks. Until they brought me in. And they brought evidence, hard evidence. I was questioned hours and hours to make sure that I'm not making up stories. I had to bring my phone with me with all the pictures showing that I was the commander on the scenes dealing with the situations, bringing the pictures of the victims. I was questioned 
go ask her. In, in the world, someone, right away, he called him, he called him, all fast. But look, I'm Israel. Nah, nothing happened. Understanding what Am Israel was suffering and still is suffering now that we have 134 people still in Gaza. Men, women, children, babies are going through who knows what. The Tsar understanding. The moment of Simchat Torah, it says that Akadosh Baruch Hu is a kid who writes a baron. Akadosh Baruch Hu looked at the letters and through the letters he created the world. He created humanity, he created the kindness of Am Yisrael, the Arevut of Am Yisrael to all the nations around the world, understanding that without Am Yisrael the world does not work. But understanding that we don't understand the minutes of Hastana of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, those seconds, Moshe Rabbeinu leading Am Yisrael the leader out of its trying, going through the Yamsuf, going through the desert 40 years, going through hard times, Cheta Egel, everything. Moshe is all the time fighting for Am Yisrael. And we don't understand. But he doesn't come into his design. It's a question. But understanding that we don't understand at the highest level. Paraduma. There's no understanding over here. But there's no question. Because we are our Amaminim, Bidem Maaminim. Moshe Emet, Viturato Emet. And everything that is written in the Torah is our understanding that this is how we have to live. Mchaadi Bitsara, being together with the other when he has hardships. Being understanding, you don't want anyone bothering you, for sure don't do it to someone else. Being the arivut zelaze. Understanding what it means giving to someone else. I was walking around in Kfar Aza with Rabbi David Lau, the chief rabbi in Eretz Israel. And I was we were walking, behind us was walking a father that lost his daughter and his son-in-law. Young children. And he was crying and upset. He was broken. And the rabbi turned around to him and gave him a good hug. And as he was hope, hugging him, he was saying, Lama, 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 why, why, Akadosh Baruch Hu, why? The Rav did not stop him, but he said to him, he gave him a bigger hug, and he said to him, Sadiq, you have to understand what you're looking at. And sometimes when you're looking at things, you do not understand the reason. And for sure, when you say Lama, you don't really mean to say Lama. Because sometimes you're not reading the letters right. Lama Mem He could be pronounced Lama, a question. And it could be pronounced Lema. What's the purpose? HaKadosh Baruch Hu sometimes puts us in situations that they're hard to understand. But it's a waking call. Not why, but what is the reason are we alive? What was the reason that in this house it happened, in this house it didn't happen? What were there supposed to be mechaper? What they're supposed to be mechaper? The understanding of the people that were in these places, some people don't understand. What do you mean? They were in a raid party. They were lefties. They were people that not Shomer Shabbat. Kashrut. 
Need them. We can't connect to them. That's the biggest mistake. Because we are so connected to them. We're connected to them more than we're connected to other things. Because those minutes of understanding what it means to be Asara, Rugei, Malchut, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Ishmael, Kohen Gadol, they were killed because they were Jews. Harugei Malchut, it says that in the Zohar, each one of them becomes a diamond <coughs> under Kiseh HaKavod. By understanding that each one from the Kimi Me'afal Dal, from the bottom of, 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 of ashes, to become the highest spirit of Kiseh HaKavod. That's what we understand. The people of Chesed Shedemet, every person by us doesn't make who, doesn't make difference who he is. But understanding that Kulamu Am Yisrael Arvim Zerazeh, collecting each one in big kavod, every drop, like it's a Efer Sefer Torah, it says that you have to bury every drop of the Efer Sefer Torah if a Sefer Torah gets burned. That's our understanding. Every one of them is Kadosh Elyon. Doesn't make difference who they are or what they are. Now, they're the highest spirit. As Chirak Adisha, the last moments of a person in this world, we clean the bodies, we dress them in the white garments, Tachrichim, reminding them that they're walking towards the aisle like, like a wedding day. Dress them beautiful. They should be pure white. Day of wedding is like Yom Kippur. They're clean from the scenes. So that's the sense. So that's the reason we make sure that they feel that way. That they're coming before Benach Malcham and Achim. And in those minutes when we deal with Arugay, Kdoshe Elyon, we understand the difference between them and the regular person. We keep the garments with the blood on them. Because it says that Biyom, the day that Mashiach will be coming, HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes all the garments, the Menachim take all the garments of the people who were killed, Bizchut, that were Tadikim, they were killed because they were Am Yisrael. Those people, their garments, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they, the Malachim, put them together and made a special garment for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it says, in that day, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wears that garment and goes around and Nokem Nikma Dam Avdecha Shafuch. That's the moments that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us back the strength of showing what is Chut of Am Yisrael, the understanding that we are the special nation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Asher Bachal Banu Mikol Amin. As we spoke before, this parasha is building the Mishkan, building the Kleya Bait, and it says, Vinatnu, the understanding of the word Vinatnu. You could read it from both sides. What's the purpose of reading? As we said before, the letters have an understanding. Every word, every letter that Kadosh Baruch Hu put in the Torah, there's a inyan, there's an understanding. Vinatnu, you could read it as we said from both sides. It's because when you give, you're getting. When you're hugging someone, Someone's hugging you. There's always the two sides. When you are kind to someone else, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will be kind to you. When you're doing chesed shenemet, no one's giving you back anything but HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The families could say thank you, but the niftar can't give you anything back. That's chut. It's our understanding 
that gives us the strength to continue doing what we're doing. But when we have the hug of Khal Israel, you in America, some of you were able to come to Eretz Israel to, to see the scenes. Not everyone is capable to come. And not everyone has the strength to see the scenes. And I don't blame you. Because what we saw, we dealt. Shemishmo. What we're going through for our rest of our lives, knowing what we dealt with, understanding what we saw, it's things that you cannot imagine, things that you shouldn't imagine, things that you should never hear about ever again. But this is what happened in Eretz Yisrael. Am Yisrael. As we say, Zaka, as Rav said, Zaka stands for Zihui Korbanot Ason, identifying bodies in situations that are horrific. That was until Simchat Torah. That's all, the way we used to do that. But we understood from Simchat Torah, the letters Zayn Kuf Aleph has a different explanation. Zen Kiruv Achim. We are the ones who united Am Yisrael, who gave the hug to Am Yisrael. A year and a half ago, Zaka has part of their units. We have lawyers, special lawyers that help the families in different situations. People that want to burn bodies. Because that's their understanding. So we have to burn the body. It's against the, Torah, against the Torah. Because putting the person in the ground, that's me'afar bata e'lafar tashuv. But sometimes there's a misunderstanding in some of these hearts. So Zaka has a special unit of lawyers that helps the family. Sometimes there's a lot of lawsuits and stuff like that. So Zaka prevents for free for these families. We help them. A year and a half ago, we had a hard situation in one of the kibbutzim around Gaza that they called us up, some member from the family, and he said, listen, they want to burn the body of the grandfather, please help us. And it took weeks, weeks, we were fighting, fighting, fighting. We did not have the schut to be able to bring this person to the Alakha. Zayn Ba'adam was Zayn Ba'adam is Yom Ha'az Piriyato Shem Moshe Rabbeinu Moshe Rabbeinu was the first volunteer in Zaka Everyone went out of Mitzrayim went, took gold and silver from Mitzrayim When did Moshe go? To collect Asmot Yosef He started Zaka He was the one showing us the way Leave everything, your, everything away and make sure that you bring the tzaddikim to burial in Eretz Yisrael, whoever is capable. But this family did not have the schut. So on Zayn Ba'adar we make special tefillot, we fast, and we go to Bet HaKavarot, and we ask Mechila, that we warn Zocheh to bring, or to do it in the right way. So we ask Mechila, make special tefillot, we fast, we go, we, we, we read Kriyat Torah in the afternoon, we make Shiurei Torah on that day. And at the end of the day, we make a Seudah, Le'elu Nishmat, a Tzaddikim. The first family that called to say that they want Zaka should make sure that everyone should be buried in the proper way according to Halakha was that family. Understanding what they felt and they understood what we did, what we connected to these people, how they felt from far away before Simchat Torah Yom Kippur, Eretz Yisrael was ripped, was very sad in Eretz Yisrael. Yom Kippur was terrible what happened in Eretz Yisrael. And all of a sudden, the front people that care for Kvurat Israel, Kvurat Lefiyah Lacha, came 
and we took care of the families, made sure that we they know where their children are, where their parents are. They could start sitting Shiva. They can know for sure they weren't captured to Gaza. Oh, they are captured, but they know that. We were the ones to bring the understanding and to do it as fast as we could so they could start taking care of their beloveds, the families. We were the connection. We were the connection. We were in one of the kibbutzim. It was terrible. Going into houses that they threw grenades. It took us 18 hours to clean a room from all the blood. From everything was all around. The ceiling, the floor, the closets, the clothes, everything was full of blood. 18 hours. Not one person. 20, 30 people working in the house, taking the stuff out, the other guys outside are cleaning all the stuff, working for hours and hours. Groups. Understanding what it means, every drop is a Sefer Torah, every drop, do chesed. And at the end of the day, we collected all the bags, and we went over to the person that was in charge from the kibbutz. We took the key, we went to Bet HaKvarot, and we dug a big grave, a big, a big grave, and we put all these bags together, because according to Allah, it has to be buried, but it doesn't have to be with the body. But it has to go to burial. So I'm walking towards the person in charge from the kibbutz. He's an old kibbutznik. Shorts, a hat, a farmer. And with me is coming a soldier. A soldier that was helping us the whole day. But we're walking towards, towards him. And he says to him, You... Go away. So I looked at him. You're talking to me? Talking to him? She says, the soldier. I don't want him here. I said to him, Rabbi, hello. <laughs> We're brothers. He says to me, no. He's a traitor. I was like, shocked. A soldier? He says, you need to understand that after the Holocaust, when we went through the kibbutzim, he said we had enough of Jews we had enough, we're Jews, good enough, we're Jews. We'll come to live in Israel, we'll be Jews. We can have the land, we're Jews. It's not, someone else will take care of that. But we live in Eretz Israel, that's enough. And we took the flag, and we took the talit, we took the stripes, and we said, this is our symbol. Again, talit, two stripes of the talit, we'll build a strong army, we'll be strong, we have the land, we control. Eight and a half hours, they butchered us, they killed us, they did whatever they wanted for our women, children, adults, they killed us. And where was the army? Where were those soldiers that we built? And we were hoping that they will be our people to help us. And who came? You with the tzitzit, Zaka, you came and you took care of our niftarim. You made sure that our children are buried properly. The talit, we have that on our symbol, but we want your tzitzit on our flag from now on. And he was hugging me and crying and crying and crying. He understands what it means to be united, Am Yisrael has to be united. Has to be one. Yaakov Avinu, before he was Niftar, Yosef brought Ephraim and Menashe, and they were already 12 Shvatim. Yaakov said to him, Li him, these two children are part of the Shvatim, they're all together, united, everyone together. And this is how we have to continue our lives, living united wherever we are, in Eretz Yisrael, around the world. But we have to be strong, proud, standing up strong and saying, Am Yisrael Chai.
When I was born into my family, I come from a special family. Baruch Hashem, I have this chut. My name is Greinemann. The Greinemann is Chazonish and the Stiper. There were brother-in-laws from a Shmuel Greinemann. He was one of the big mashpi'im in Chabad. And he was one of the Machavruzot, the Mashgiach, by Rav Moshe Feinstein in the Yeshiva. When Shmuel Greinemann came to America, so the Chazonish went to Eretz Yisrael. The Chazonish did not have children. So he wrote with him my grandfather, Rav Shmariyahu. He wrote this, uh, all the books of the Chazonish, all the Psakim and all the Achot from the Chazonish my grandfather wrote. Because the Chazonish did not have children. When my father was born, the Chazonish was sitting and learning. And when he was sitting and learning, nothing could happen. He was, his head was in the Gemara. Everything, people could walk by and he heard, didn't hear anything. And he's sitting and learning and my grandfather comes into the room. Chazonish stops learning, stands up, walks over to my grandfather and he says to him, Mazel Tov, you had a boy. The grandfather was shocked. How does a rabbi know? And he says to him, and continues and says, this boy will be called Zechariah. My grandfather was shocked. It's a Yamani name. We're Ashkenaz. <laughs> How do you give a Yamani name to an Ashkenaz kid? But if the rabbi says, there's no questions. But he knew that his wife, my grandmother, is going to be hard on her. So he asked Chazonish, what's, what's understanding? Not questioning the rabbi, but what's understanding? So my uncle, the Baruch, he was a child then. He told us a story again and again and again. My grandmother always used to say the story. The Chazonish, in these words he said to my grandfather, Eliyahu Hanavi was by me. And he said, Nechamat Am Yisrael, Nechamat Zion starts with the Nevuot from Zechariah Hanavi. And this child, the Nechamot, will start with him. My father was Nifter when I was five years old. He was 30 years old. My father was a Mashgiach in the Esha Torah by Rav Noach Weinberg for 10 years. And when we grew up as children, we didn't understand what it means. My father's name, Vahim Sheikh Yud. We said, okay, he was Machzin with Shua people. Those are the his Talmidim, they're continuing to do Chazara Vichuva. I'm a carpenter. My younger brother, he has this chut to continue doing Chazara Vichuva. What I do is I take people that are hard, hard, they have hard situations in life, and I train them to become self supporting So I do Chesed. Train them for three, four years. And then I fire them. No, I don't. I open them their own business. I make sure that they become carpenters. I help them to build their own part. People say, you're crazy. I say, yes, I'm in Zaka. But I explain to them, it's not mine. If it's mine, I'll get it. But the understanding that I help them to be able to have their own jobs and to be able to support their families and train them and help them open their own business. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yishalem Zcharenu and Baruch Hashem. Walking through Kfar Aza, one day, I get a hug from a person that runs towards me and he's hugging me very strong and crying. 
And I say to myself, okay, I'm Israel, give him a hug. So I give him a hug. So a minute, two minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, a half an hour. And the guy doesn't stop crying. So okay, <laughs> I'm not a psychiatrist, but... <laughs> And after a half hour of crying and hugging me, he says to me, do you know who I am? So I say, no. He says to me, I'm a Talmud from your father. And I was shocked. He says to me, now I understand what the Chazonish said. What was the purpose of explaining what it means to be bringing the Divrei Geula was Zechariah trying to unite at Am Yisrael they thought, we thought that they have to be the continuation of my father to be Mekarel Am Yisrael but I have this chut of uniting Am Yisrael going around the world speaking to Khan Yisrael making sure that these Niftarim come to burial the last moments of a Jew to make sure that they get the proper according to halacha that's my zikhut and that's my connection to my father 16 years old when I started being a volunteer in Zaka people told me you're crazy you're empty, okay you're a medic, okay we understand but dealing with bodies or parts of bodies <coughs> So I explained to them that by doing chesed, I felt that I'm doing things that I understand. But doing things that I could not understand, that connects me straight to my father. And Baruch Hashem, I have this chut. And Baruch Hashem, we have this chut sitting here together, being united, being supporting each other, hugging each other, giving each other the strength to continue being ready for chas v'shalom if up north we never know what could happen there any second HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yishalem Zcharenu V'yasin Machala Mikol Am Yisrael and the soldiers should be strong and be able to come back and all the people that are captured should come back safe and healthy and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will send us Mitadvei Zaka and soldiers and people that dealt with the situations should have koach to raise our families because not only we are going through the trauma, our wives, our children, our co-workers, everyone around us in Eretz Yisrael is going through such a hardship. But we for sure that we saw these things with our own eyes. Shem Yazon, she have siyata dishmaya and bizchut. Am Yisrael, Nibashia, Ezrat Hashem, Biyad Goyim, Tzkenu, Bemera, Be'amenu, Amen. Okay, we're going to try something for the moment. Send it maybe. Yeah. Hello. We'll send Hello. it afterwards in the group. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I hear you. Beautiful. I could hear you, Rabbi. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so I think that uh, we don't have to really add to whatever we just heard of the. He had miracles that despite the tragedy, uh, they were able to witness and share with us. I think that the silence says it all.
not simple for them, for the families that we just heard. But there is a pasuk that we say whenever somebody is sitting Shiva, at least according to the uh, tradition, we say Ke ish asheri moter hameno. We say, like a mother consoles a child, also Kadosh Baruch Hu is the one that gives the Muhammad. So without a doubt, the Kadosh Baruch Hu gives them strength to overcome this. I tell you from personal experience, when a husband shalom, there is a levaya or a mizvah, the way it's called in Brooklyn, a burial. No drama, no terrorism, you know, elderly person leaving the world, uh, it affects us. Most of the day is gone. By the time you coordinate with the Hebra Kadisha and make sure that everything is done that Moshe Israel, as we know, in our Torah, there is something called Kavod Hamet. You know, we mentioned about the concept of cremation uh, before. Yeah, for many people, cremation is a very affordable. But we know that from a Torah perspective, you know, affordability becomes a uh, secondary. Kavod Hamet, the honor to the person because we value, not only we value life, we value also the body. And we have also this belief of and everything that goes through. And obviously we're not talking about cases of inquisition, crusades, the Holocaust, that these are matters which are beyond our control. But we go to Elevaya, we come back stressed, we come back sudden, and that is without drama. So multiply that, just one case, one case that Zaka had to deal with. Can you imagine 1,400 cases? These are the numbers that we have, believe were mentioned on the wake of the unfortunate tragedy. But obviously, I'm familiar with the holy work that they do. I saw them in action with the Champlain Towers collapse down the block in Surfside. I was here in Miami with the Hakam Shilamo Amar, that was the chief rabbi of Israel. And we were asked to go to Haiti back when they had the earthquake. Once the rabbi became aware that Zaka came, he says, Dayenu. Let them go. They are malachim. They they handle it better than we're gonna be. You know we're gonna be there. What we gonna do? Just give them words of hizuk, words of encouragement, which obviously they were given. But at that moment, the biggest encouragement may not necessarily be a word, may be the action. That's what the Mishnah writes. In Pirkei Avot, Lo Amidrashi Haikal, Ele Hamaase. Bottom line, they roll up the sleeves, they step up to the plate, and they do the holy work. For those who may have not been aware of some halachic ramifications, because it's not a topic that we usually talk about, but what he mentioned about the spending of 18 hours in a house picking up every speck of blood. That is actually an halachic requirement. Why? Ki hadam hu hanafish. Because the soul of the person lives throughout their blood, separating the topics. But when we spoke in the past about the loss of kashrut, why so much emphasis is made on the loss 
of kashrut. Because what the person eats, it affects the blood of the person. It purifies the blood of the person. The food is kasher, the blood that travels to our system, our heart, our brain, is in a godly way. Hamavdil. Same thing happens with the blood of casualties. Even in hospitals, here that's something that we do have experience with, obviously in a much minuscule way, as I said before. I go to the hospital, okay, there is some blood, pick it up, be nice to the, to the remains, the body is intact, no drama, okay, the painful situation that somebody passed away, but most of the time is in a very clean, neat, organized manner. In these cases that we have heard, is definitely far away. But we know that Akadosh Baruch Hu is the one that gives a chizuk. Because without having that godly level of chizuk to zaka and also the other volunteers of the Hatzala responders, etc., they see what we don't know and we don't see. Perhaps the closest may have been Hamavdil watching a movie that has a special effects, unless with the exception of our dear Sachin here visiting us today, that he has a lot of experience in the concept of law enforcement uh, as well, that they get to see things that we don't see. And we hope and pray that we don't have to come across this type of situations, but who knows? Agadosh Baruch Hu may have a special a plan. Like he said before, sometimes you save people's lives with a Torah class, sometimes you save people's lives by being there in the moment that they need it the most. We don't understand the ways of Agadosh Baruch Hu. The Pasuk writes at the end of Sefer Devarim in Perashat Nitzavim and Istarot Hashem Elokeinu. As I said before in the past, and in the past, I'm sure that we all have questions. Why these things happen? Why did it happen? How could it be the day of Simchat Torah, etc.? And again, the Torah says, Hanistarot Hashem Elokeinu. These matters really belong to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Beniglot lanu ulbanenu ad olam laasot et kol divrei Torah azot. But what is revealed to us for eternity is to continue. To continue, the Pasuk writes in the Navi, Ish et re'eu ya'azoru ulahiv yomar hazad. We help each other, we hug each other, we support each other. And therefore, I take the opportunity uh, to say that Hatzala or Mahila Zaka, obviously, they try to save those that can be saved. But the reality is, and I'm not sure if I'm wrong, but if Zaka gets involved, it means that now it comes the second aspect of life. Kavod Amet. Hesed Shel Emet. The Torah calls it Hesed Ve'emet. Al-Natik Bereni Be'misrahim. The concept of Hesed Shel Emet comes from Yaakov Avinu Alav Shalom. Those are the words that Yaakov Avinu says. Now, why is it called Hesed Shelemet? He may have said it, but I'm going to finish with this. When a person does an act of Hesed, there are many things that happen. First of all, when we do Hesed, the Hesed reciprocates back to us. You know, he mentioned about Perasha Kitisa, correct? You mentioned the word that says Venatenu. Right? That can be read right to left, left to right. In English, I think uh, it's called a polydrome. Polydrome? Palindrome. What, Professor Mark? Palindrome. Palindrome. Okay, close enough. Palindrome. Yeah, don't worry about it. No, it doesn't mean hairy <coughs> That's something else. That means that you read the same word right to left, left to right. For example, in e the word in Hebrew, ima. Aleph, Mem, Aleph, same thing. But I'm going to say something. If like, you look, like the beach. it depends which Nusah. 
because according to some places in the Nevi'im, it has a yod in between. So we'll save the Devar Torah for some of the time, uh, Sadiq. But I'd like maybe to add one more uh, concept and feel free to use it, okay? You can use it. So the Pasuk writes, Venatenu, okay? Now, we know that according to the Torah reading, Sephardi or Ashkenazim, we have Ta'amim. We have tropes. So in the Sephardic tradition, we have something called Azla Gerish. Azla Gerish, it goes like this. Azla Gerish. Like this. This is the sign. So if you look here, Benatenu, the Torah is telling us, when you give, that's the motion of giving, comes back. Devakit. Venatenu. When you give, you get. That's the meaning of this pasuk. And you can see it here for the audience. The town in the word benatenu. Benatenu azla gerish. So here we can also give them. Besides chizuk, besides a nice breakfast in their honor. Besides hogging, but they can also benefit. I believe that I read an article while, while this was going on, that they ran out of supplies. They ran out of supplies. Now, what supplies? Body bags. Emet or no? Cleaning products to pick up the blood. Do the calculation. 20 people, 18 hours in a house. How many hours is to the Hezbon? 360 hours to clean in a, in a, in a, in a, in a home. Yeah, and, and again, Israel homes are not condominiums in sunny Florida. Mamash. But, so there is a barcode on the flyers and there is a barcode that is being around and I'm sure that uh, uh, I'm not sure how many of us would like to volunteer uh, for Zaka you know in the field but definitely I'm sure they always need for volunteers because I think that they do need the briefing and whatever I mean, again, I'm not a professional in the field, but I understand, you know, more or less from the <coughs> traumatic experience uh, that they see and they experience, but one thing that we can do, and this is help them, donate. So by Ezzet Hashem, for those who get the class via email or via WhatsApp, I'll add the link uh, to donate. For those that are here in the room, take your cell phones, very simple, scan the code, you have a QR code that gives you directly straight to the page to be able to donate. You can give more, you can give less, but at least from our 6,000 miles away from Eres Israel, that's the least we can do to be mishtatef, to be associated. Remember one thing, that Zaka workers are volunteers are volunteers yeah. i'm not asking how is the carpentry business doing because from wall street it's closed i figured that four months okay for four months his business is closed but guess what i'm not worried because akadosh baruch Hu says you know in perashat re'e you know what Olam says you took care of my needy i'll take care of your needy who are the needy of Akadosh Baruch Hu? Yetomim, Almanot, the widows, the orphans, the destitute. So what Olam says, you take care of my needy, I'll take care of your needy. So by Zat Hashem, uh, we say to the Zaka representatives here, his being so they should be strong. They should have the courage uh, to continue in a good, in a happy way. And by Zat Hashem, Akadosh Baruch Hu Yomai, Yomar Daile Sadoteno, 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu would say enough, it's enough, it's time to say goodbye to the Galut, to terrorism, and by Zat Hashem we should be Zohe to the Yeshua for all of Am Israel. Uh, amen. So please, Kahal Kadosh, don't be shy. Here is the QR code, which I will post uh, for everybody that is a recipient. <laughs> okay, I think we may be able to now. Okay, one second. Okay, we're gonna, now we're gonna. I want to shut down my my microphone. Okay, we're gonna turn the video for the, for the Aitora audience to be able to watch the video. This is from, which video is this from? October 7th, Zaka? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna lower the, the I'm gonna shut down this microphone. Okay, professor? Okay. We have also credit card over here, so whoever wants, not only the no, time. We know that the QR for some people may be challenging. Do not worry, there is a credit card machine waiting for your credit card to be slide and by Zat Hashem, uh, the Zahut of the Sedaka, expedite Mashiach's arrival. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Shh. 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 Shh.